Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, California Weather Watch. Today is September 7th and right now we're looking at the visible satellite imagery as of yesterday morning. Taking a look at the state of California here, you can see we did have some early morning moisture in the mid-levels across some of the state. You can see the marine there up and down the coastal area. It's kind of a mixed bag there right along the immediate coast of the Bay Area. And then down the central coast in Southern California, you know, fairly sunny skies yesterday morning. So we're going to scroll through the day yesterday and you'll see those some of those thunderstorms pop up across some of the Sierra Nevada. You see those lightning strikes associated, east slopes just off to the east of Lake Tahoe there, and up across from northeast California and up into Oregon. Didn't quite get a lightning strike, it doesn't look like across Baja or the transverse rains. But if we go through the overnight hours and off into this morning, right there and if you can see as i'm speaking right now we are starting to pop off some thunderstorms into southern california again the peninsula range here across southern california and that's where we are right about now you can see across the muggy on rim here as we've got some thunderstorm development uh, across arizona also so we're going to dive into some of these details here coming up take a look at what kind of cool down is coming we'll take a look at the extended forecast as always we'll take a look to see if we have any offshore wind events as always as well so taking a look here, I'm going to update that. And you can still see we still have some heat advisories and some excessive heat warnings right now. Pacific Northwest, a lot of the West Coast has been under this heat spell for the last few days. And if we take a look here at Saturday's forecast, Sacramento, you can see up towards 100 degrees there for Redding. Sacramento checking in 98. Much cooler, of course, if you go towards the coastal areas. Look at Fort Bragg, only 63. Shelter Coast, 63. Eureka, 66. So go inland if you want the heat. This is Las Vegas, Nevada. Kind of an interesting graphic they put out here. This is the probability of thunderstorms here. And it's coming up on noon right now, uh, 12.06 to be exact. And you can see that it, there's Las Vegas here. Better chances across Arizona, but there is some chances for some thunderstorm activity on in through California as well. We'll look at some more of that as we go through the video here today. This is the excessive heat across Southwest California through Monday. And we've had some pretty darn right warm temperatures. Uh, Santa Barbara with some downsloping winds kept things pretty warm. At times yesterday look at canoga park 114 fillmore 109 pyramid lake lancaster 106 look at long beach 104 degrees so yeah we have some pretty warm temperatures so san luis obispo at 102 and if we take a look at San Diego, I'm going to zoom in on that a little bit. Here you can see this is for today, Palm Springs 112, Thermal 110, and even pretty warm out to the coastal areas. You see Irvine checking in at 95. So taking a look at the thunderstorm potential here today, you can see it does include portions of Southern California and the Pacific Northwest, portions of Nevada and Arizona. And if we go to day two again for Southern California, and then day three, that starts to slide off to the east a bit there. And this is the general thunderstorm risk probability outlook here by the severe prediction center so let's take a look at what's going on in the upper levels in the atmosphere this ridge here is kind of responsible for what's been uh, bringing our heat across a lot of the west coast there is this little subtle feature here that was bringing some thunderstorms into the pacific northwest yesterday kind of moving through but you can see that ridge is generally going to be on the weakening trend as we come up here and then you can see this trough swinging down as we go through about the september 10th and 11th time frame here and this is going to help drop the temperatures back down towards more seasonable or even below average for some locations you can see that hang out for a bit as we go through about September 13th and then maybe another trough after that. This one looks like it actually gets cut off and almost starts to retrograde back out over the ocean and then we rebuild a ridge in the wake of that. But plenty of time to worry about that as we go. This is all looking all the way out towards September 16th, mid portion of the month. Now, if we take a look at the European, this is the Hawaiian Islands, the bottom left here, and you can see the state of California. What we're looking for at this time of year is to see if any kind of this tropical moisture here, or one of these tropical systems, tries to make an attempt into the southwest portion of the USA. We're scrolling through Saturday and Sunday, looking at some thunderstorm activity that we already talked about. But then we scroll off into the extended. What we're looking for here is this system diving into the Pacific. Pacific Northwest as we go through the midweek portion and then that's going to actually bring some precipitation down into some portions of Northern California. So we watching that that's going to be happening on the day Wednesday and then you see this next system here this tropical system continues to show up at times. The models are kind of all over the place on that, but we will be watching to see if that does bring a surge of moisture back into the Southwest USA. And right now the time frame on that is looking all the way out towards the next weekend. So it's a fantasy forecast at this point. Take it with a grain of salt. Looking at a two meter temperature anomaly, this is the European, you can see central, Bay Area, northern coast, below normal temperatures. But as we scroll through here, you'll see that we get a finally get some relief here as the system's going to move into some of the west coast and you can see the temperatures dropping back down even below normal for much of the state coming up here. But if we scroll 
far enough into the future, you can see a little bit of a bounce back start to occur as we go through mid-September, bringing some above average conditions back on top of that. So yeah, at least we have this cool down coming first. And then, you know, you can flip a coin for the extended forecast. Not too worried about that right now. Uh, looking at the composite reflectivity on the North American model, this is a high resolution model because it shows you what the Doppler radar may look like here over the next 60 hours or so. And you can see as we go through the day today, we still have some of these showers and some of these thunderstorms out there across some of the desert areas, the high deserts out towards the uh, California and Nevada border actually look fairly strong. So this could be producing some prolific lightning here as we go through. This would be about two o'clock, uh, three o'clock. <clears throat> There's four o'clock and five o'clock. And then we scroll on in through the nighttime hours and we take a look at what's coming tomorrow. And again, we pop off some of these showers here. So we do have that thunderstorm potential according to the North American model. And then as we scroll on in through Monday, maybe a couple showers there as well as we go on in through Monday afternoon. So taking a look at total precipitation in inches, and I just gonna wanna scroll through this pretty quick. You can see the shot of moisture we're getting today. So kind of hit and miss there, you know, not everybody's gonna be getting this precipitation or anything like that. Not everybody's gonna be getting a thunderstorm. And then another round, probably a little bit lesser on Sunday, and then maybe one more round on Monday. But you can see not a lot of precipitation, not a lot of widespread stuff. And this is mainly just noise along the immediate coastline. They're not expecting any kind of rainfall. If you take a look at lightning flash density potential, this is the high resolution model, and you can see that agrees, and it does uh, kind of show that risk across some of the southern Sierra Nevada for a thunderstorm this afternoon as well. Now, well, what we're going to look at here is the GFS, the 12Z run. This is mean sea level pressure. So what I like to look for here is to see what kind of tropical systems are bobbing and weaving about. Do we have any mid-latitude cyclones getting towards the west coast of the USA? Do we have any big high pressure systems setting up over the Great Basin, driving some offshore wind events here? So let's scroll through this and we'll continue. Continue to look on into this weekend. Not much showing up here. We're going to look off into the future a bit more. As we go through the midweek period, there's that weak system that moves into the west coast. It will help, help drop our temperatures a bit. But you'll notice as I'm scrolling out into the extended forecast, we're not looking at any kind of huge high pressure system coming over the Great Basin. And that would be what could drive those offshore wind events and uh, potentially bring some of those dangerous fire conditions all the way up to the coastal areas. You can see the Pacific High kind of dominating here and you don't see any big dome of surface pressure here across the Intermountain West. So scrolling on in through, you didn't see any kind of, uh, you know, you didn't think any, see anything stand out in the tropics as well, trying to move up into the Southwest. The GFS has been showing that at times. If we look at the European artificial intelligence, let me update that. Let's do the 12Z run, which I have not actually looked at yet, but we're going to play through it. And we'll take a look. You can see that system moving into the west coast here as we go through Tuesday night into Wednesday, cooling things down. There's that little tropical blurb here that's been showing up on the European that tries to move towards the Gulf of California. And that could try to bring a shot of moisture with it as we go towards next weekend, as I mentioned. But then we go into the extended, and you can see maybe a little bit of high pressure trying to build in here at times. And there we go. That's more of an offshore wind event. Doesn't look terribly strong, but you can see the lower pressure here over some of the valley areas of California and the coastal areas. A bit of a trough up the coastline with the higher pressure here that would be driving some offshore winds so we'll be watching that as we go on into the mid portion of september and yeah that goes about th out about 360 hours on the european so national blend of models this is for today you can see some hundreds there bakersfield up towards 100 again for you know redding chico out there but if we scroll through tomorrow a little bit of a cool down and it's monday kind of hold and serve there and then we go Tuesday. Wednesday, we start to cool things down. We're going to feel the temperature change here as we go towards the end of the week. I mean, it's not a huge cool down, not like what we had in August, but you know, you'll notice it. It's going to drop us back down from the lofty temperatures we have been having across a lot of the areas, more seasonable temperatures coming in as we go through the end of the month or mid portion of the month, I should say. Here's something interesting here. So this is the European extended forecast that runs every single day now and it goes out 46 days and what i've done here is gone all the way out towards october 22nd that's a long ways from now but it's just kind of something interesting that weather models do show us at times and you can see that we have that above average signal across a lot of the state of california a little bit of cool or the normal signal out there across some of the coastal areas but just something kind of fun to look at and if we take a look at this this is what is known as the pacific north american oscillations there's different oscillations going on the one i most often talk about about, or the one you're most often hear about is the El Nino Southern Oscillation. That is different than this one. This is more sub-seasonal and you can kind of see when troughs and ridges are going to be setting up right off the coastline. So this would be 
as in positive here, you're dealing with higher pressure out over the coastal areas, and then you bring the lower pressure out over the Pacific Ocean here when we're in negative territory. Don't worry, I'm going to show you a map on this here next. But then you can see how this kind of varies back and forth as we go towards the end of the month. And if we take a look here, this is showing what is the positive phase right here. So this means the deeper low pressure system is out over here across the Gulf of Alaska. We'd have a stronger subtropical jet stream here and potentially wetter conditions for the state of California. See the big high pressure system there. And uh, yeah, so that would be what uh, Pacific North American positive looks like. This is what negative looks like. And this would be more characterized by a northwest jet stream here with troughing over the inland Pacific Northwest and much a weaker subtropical jet stream there also. So yeah, pretty interesting. In fact, let me back up one more time here and let's just go ahead and check that here. You can see that there is uh, some interesting stuff on there. Again, the negative phase here shows the high pressure out over the Pacific Ocean. And the positive phase would be that um, low pressure back out over the Pacific Ocean. So, yeah, interesting stuff, you know. Do it, do what you will with that. But this is something we will be watching as we go through the winter months here, and you can kind of see how this bounces back and forth. This becomes more of an issue, and it becomes more valuable once you get on in towards the season where these mid-latitude cyclones are trying to impact the West Coast of North America. But anyway, I'm rambling on a bit here. Um, yeah, I had some kids soccer out there this morning, so I had to delay the video process until uh, what is it about just afternoon here. So anyway, I hope you guys are having a good day. Otherwise, click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow. We'll check out all the re recent patterns and see what the model runs have to say. And I will talk to you guys then.